Good morning, and welcome to the Tuesday Morning Devotional. I'm Aubrietta Jones, one of the pastors at the First United Methodist Church of Maumelle. I'm happy to share this devotional time with you. Um, I want to begin with uh, letting you know that this past Sunday, we had an incredible time of worship in our traditional service where we had a guest singer. Uh, we had a guest singer, and she was amazing. Her name was Val Bell and she was absolutely incredible. This is something that uh, I have been uh, encouraging uh, our director of traditional music to do, uh, to invite people from outside the church occasionally to come and sing as we continue to rebuild our music ministries. It's exciting to get to have the choir in the choir loft again, and it's a great thing that we get to have different kinds of worship experiences on a Sunday morning, new and creative ways to praise our Father in heaven and to allow us to draw near and to experience the Holy Spirit. So that's an exciting thing that's going on. Vacation Bible School is coming. That's exciting too. Today, there is voting here on the campus and there will be people in and out all day using this time to exercise, exercise their freedom to vote. And uh, certainly prayers for wisdom and discernment. However, one chooses to vote, I encourage you to vote. If you have not voted in early voting, I encourage you to get out and vote and take that privilege as an honor and as a great responsibility because we are a nation that is privileged to get to vote. And as we will celebrate Memorial Day this coming weekend, we will remember many who died to preserve that freedom. And so we, we want to celebrate the right, the opportunity to vote. Uh, it's, a, it's a great day to read God's holy word. It is a little rainy out. It's been a little rainy all week, but it's still a great day to read God's holy word. I wish I could show you adequately the beauty of this space. You get to see a little bit the windows that are behind me, but the light coming through somehow, I just can't figure out how to correct that. Maybe one of you know, and if you do, I want you to come and share that with me so that I will know what to do. But our scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians. And before I read it, I'd like to tell you that we are beginning a new series on 1 Corinthians. It's not going to be the entire book of 1 Corinthians. We are going to come back and cover 1 Corinthians in chunks, and I hope that we will get through most of 1 Corinthians by the end of this year, but we are going to read, I believe it's about the first three chapters together and study them in worship in the coming couple of months. And the, the powerful thing to me about 1 Corinthians, I have to say, really, it's my favorite of all of the letters in scripture. It's powerful me, to me to see how that people from all the different uh, experiences that they had in Corinth are able to leave a life behind that doesn't honor God, to leave practices and habits behind. They haven't quite left them behind in the letter, and that's one of the things that Paul has to talk to them about in the letter, but they, they do leave behind a great deal to follow the Lord. And they're imperfect people. They're sinners just like me and you, but they do attempt to leave things behind to follow the Lord. And there was a great cost for those early Christians to follow the Lord. And so I love the word of God. I love to read it. I love to study it. I love to share it with others. And I hope you feel that same love for God's word as we, uh, as we look at 1 Corinthians together. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I share that with you, that's a short verse, and some may say, well, what's the message in that for us? It seems fairly straightforward. It is merely an opening greeting that was very typical in 
ancient Greek letters and in writing letters that the art of letter writing, there were certain conventions that were followed and that's one of them. Paul uses a similar opening in just about every letter that he offered with unique things for each town, each church he was writing to. The thing that speaks to me in this passage is that he mentions someone is with them. He mentions his brother Sosthenes, and I thought I would talk about that just a little bit today. Sosthenes was from Corinth, likely. Sosthenes was somebody who was um, was suffered greatly. He was a synagogue leader, and he suffered for his faith, uh, what became his faith in Jesus. Um, and as Sosthenes is with Paul, we can assume that Sosthenes may have been the one that helped Paul with this letter. Paul struggled with his vision for much of his ministry life. It was a part of his calling into ministry and his calling really into faith in Jesus that he had a period of blindness. And that blindness was hard for him. At other times, he had to write in letters. He wrote in big letters, uh, see with what large letters I'm writing my name. He was trying to tell people that, yes, I, I can't hardly see, but this is my signature, and so you know it's from me. And this letter, I believe Sosthenes was helping him with the letter because of his vision issues. So many people look at their lives and put limits on what they can do for God because of the ways that they see their own weaknesses. I have vision issues. I can't get around as well as I used to be able to. I wasn't a particularly strong student in school, so that means I can't teach a Bible study now. On and on and on, people think about their issues and their weaknesses and the ways that they lack. I believe God calls us to look at our lives and consider, are we in fact called to look at our weaknesses as a way to show our love for God so that we come to service of God and we say, God, yes, I have these problems. I have these weaknesses. There are things that I cannot do. But at the same time, you can use me and I will glorify you and I will love and serve you despite my weaknesses, maybe even through my weaknesses. I'm going to call other people in to help me. It will be a united effort and I will make a difference in the kingdom. In whatever ways you choose to use me, that's what I'm going to do. I think that is the most godly approach to the ways we feel we're lacking. In the ministry, there are people that deal with dyslexia. There are people that deal with a variety of health problems. There are people that have dealt with weaknesses in the sense of being being maybe prone to certain kinds of habits that are a challenge. Maybe somebody is prone to sarcasm and has to remember and learn how to deal with their particular way of interacting with the world. Maybe there's somebody that goes into ministry and says, well, you know, I don't know that I'm really the one that it's going to be as loving and nurturing next to the deathbed of a treasured church member because that's not really who I am as a person. None of us have all of the gifts of one perfect Christian. None of us have all of the gifts of one perfect pastor. None of us have all of the gifts and talents of one perfect church volunteer. And none of us have all the talents and gifts of one perfect evangelist. It takes everyone with our strengths and our weaknesses and our eccentricities and we come together and we make the church and we create beautiful things for God together because we just decide to step forward to do the things he calls us to do. And so I want to ask you, beloved, what is it that God is calling you to do? I can't imagine what it would have been like for Paul to be in ministry, to have such a significant sight deficit in a time when he was also persecuted for his faith, frequently running for his life and knowing that his vision was unreliable. I can't imagine what that would have been like, but he did it. And so many others have served God despite weaknesses and sometimes through weaknesses, sometimes the weakness and yet the earnestness and the desire to serve blended together motivates another person who has all of their abilities intact in a more conventional way 
and they step forward and they decide to assist and they end up making a difference when they wouldn't have made a difference otherwise. God doesn't use perfect people because there aren't any perfect people. I want you to pray about what it is God is calling you to do to strengthen our church. If you're someone who is watching and you attend another congregation, I want you to pray about what God is calling you to do in your church. I want you to call to, to pray to God about how you're being called to encourage other Christians, to lead other Christians, who you're being called to invite to church. These are things we have to think about and consider. These are things that it's God's will for us to look at very seriously because we have this one life to live for him before we join him in eternity. And it could make such a difference if we simply surrender our lives to God and let him deal with anything within ourselves that we think is not up to the task. And may God bless all of us in that effort. Amen. Our sermon series that is coming up is called Trigger Warning because the people in Corinth were very, very sensitive. They had a background that put them in a place that made it more likely for them to be offended, to wonder if they were really getting the best of the best and getting the things that they deserved. They had a number of doubts and they had trouble trusting their leaders because they were sensitized by their life experiences. And so we're going to be we're going to be going through this series called Trigger Warning, and we're going to be looking at the ways that their heightened anxiety might cause them to miss the point. And we're going to learn the point and apply richly to our lives the truth of Scripture. Thank you for being a part of this this morning. I hope I see you on a Sunday morning soon. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the chance to study your word. Thank you for the chance to pray for one another. We pray, Lord, that you would bless everybody who is listening today. Help them, God, to feel your presence and your grace and your love. I ask, oh Lord, that as we go about our days today, that you would nudge us, that you would speak into our lives and help us to consider what your perfect will is for us. Allow us, gracious God, to serve you. Allow us to be used by you so that anything we do would be for your glory and for your honor and that we would get to do things that we never dreamed we could do because of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit working in us. I pray these things, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and amen. You all have a wonderful week, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.